Hello, Rough Rider Nation, and welcome to the Rider Report, the ins and outs of Yavapai College Athletics. I'm Brad Clifford, the Athletic Director here at Yavapai College, and today I'm joined by Ryan Kogel, our head baseball coach. Ryan, welcome back to the program. Thank you. Well, we just concluded our, two, concluded our 2017 baseball campaign. Needless to say, it was a little up and down season. We finished with an overall record of 34 and 22. We finished with a, a conference record of 20 and 16. You've had a chance to digest a little bit on the on the season. What uh, What are your thoughts? Uh, pouting's over. <laughs> it's it's digested as much as it can be. Um, you know, it's it's hard when you um, when you don't accomplish some of the goals that you set out to accomplish because it's hard to rate failure. Right. Um, and I also don't consider the season a failure no. in many ways. So it's a bittersweet season. It's it's sweet in that we accomplished a lot of things we wanted to accomplish and obviously bitter and we didn't accomplish a couple of things that we wanted to accomplish. Well, and I thought that I thought the the conference had good parity. I thought it was a very good conference up and down and and yeah. and we were right we were in the playoffs right until the last literally the last game of the season. Yeah, I think we were a game out of second place and, right. and tied for fourth and obviously you know, Arizona Western did a good job towards the end. Sure. Uh, they're still doing a good job. Got hot at the right time. Drew Drew did a good job with this team, and credit to them. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, you can't sit back and hope for other people to do your job for you. And I think being one game short, you can look back many instances and say, where could we get that game? But um, I really liked we were playing our best baseball team of the year. True. And that was a goal. True. And that's what you have to do. And that's what Arizona Western's doing and Central's doing right now in the playoffs, along with a couple other teams in the district. But, um, you know, you can look back and find that game many spots, whether it's in February, March, April, wherever. Well, and I thought we did our job the last few weeks of the season where where we got some good, some clutch uh, uh, um, sweeps uh, and also some clutch uh, splits on the road. Yeah, that time of year, as a coach, you're almost a spectator. Right. You know, you're, you're 50 four or 50 games in, um, and it was truly 100% honestly fun watching guys go out and really get it. They started to get it, and I know it's a vague term, but it's a term we use in coaching. Uh, mm-hmm. Players started to really get it. They started to understand the process of playing, how we want it to play. Um, people started to understand roles, and winning became more important than individual success. While there was individual success throughout the year, that's really – um, and I talked to them at the end of the season, take this to your four-year program, and they'll all go to a four-year school and hopefully make somebody better. Well, let's talk about a few of those those uh, players that, that really kind of shined a little bit this year. Obviously, Dylan Enweiler had a great great season. He he goes uh, hits three thirty eight on the year with nine home runs, 39 RBIs, 58 runs scored, 28 stolen bases, and was second-team All-ACC AC and first-team NJCA Region 1, Division 1. Corey Wills led the league, or not the league, but led the the team in batting average at 384. Who really, really had a great half, the second half of the season, and he was also named to the second team All ACCAC. So those two really kind of stood out and had good years. Yeah, they were run producers, run scorers. Um, again, two guys that I think got the absolute most out of themselves this season. Showed up every day and worked. Mm-hmm. And um, two guys that deserve to keep playing. I suppose deserves got nothing to do with it, but. Um, Really, just you almost get a little gut wrenched with guys like that because you want good things for them and you're rooting for them as much as not more than they're rooting for themselves. Right. But really happy with how they played, uh, how they were in the classroom, how they were off the field. Really represented our program well. Did a great job. Uh, Dallas Tesser and Jedediah Fagger and all ACCAC honors. Uh, they had a great year. Mm-hmm. Um, Dallas, we only have one year, of course. Jed, we had two years, and and he really came into his own this year after a. Uh, not not a bad first year, but uh, he really had a great second year. Dallas started playing his best baseball, which he was still a freshman. You know, he right. didn't play at Washington last year. He transferred, uh, and I think North Carolina is going to like what they get from a ball player and from a person. Uh, Jed, that'll bring tears to your eye. Uh, I talked to him and said, "Man, remember what kind of player you were when you came in?" Mm-hmm. And, and he kind of laughed yeah. jokingly, um, maybe not jokingly, a little seriously that. He's a much improved player, mm-hmm. um, you know. So again, I know I'm saying the same thing, but I think you start to see that you're getting the most out of players, and they're really 
<laughs> as in our program, they really start to figure it out about the time they leave. Right, right. And that's the unfortunate thing about two-year programs, right? Uh, Avery Weems, he, he went, earns all ACC, AC accolades with six games and uh, won six games, and he led the team in strikeouts with 87. And he's headed on to U of A having a, a bigger and better things for us. Yeah, I think a year ago, uh, he would be the first to tell you that the world sometimes sped up on him and the game sped up on him. Um, Arizona at that time probably speeds up on him. Right. And right now he's as ready as he can be. You know, you don't know what you don't know. But um, when you talk about development, moving guys on, and, and hopefully preparing them for the future and their success, he's ready to go. And that's that's just, you know, a great feeling for, for a coach and for a staff. Well, and he's stepping into a big-time program with U of A. So that's a, he, he's going to step he's into ready, the though. stage. He's ready, He's yeah. ready. Uh, Rez, I thought he pitched great the last half of the season. He, he had some heartbreaking losses where he only gave up a couple runs. Mm -hmm. He won some, uh, some close games, but he was throwing real well towards the end there. Yeah, Rez and probably Jake Coulterman, um, both guys that use their experience to their advantage. Um, I think both guys, you know, I, I don't, don't name captains, but I think people, players would vote them captains, sure. especially amongst the pitching staff. S ultra competitive uh, we've talked about those two in the past and certainly anchored things from a pitching perspective uh, while we're waiting to really figure things out and get hot. Right, right. Well, speaking of Jake, I mean, he, he, he won seven games this year, and, and he has a two-year total of 18 wins at Yavapai that's College. Pretty awesome. that's, that's pretty impressive for Jake. And, and any, he took a year off. You could take an ERA. You mm -hmm. can take strikeouts. You can take all that stuff. At the end of the day, the goal is to win. Win the game. And he's a winner. And he's won the games. Absolutely. Well, let's talk about a little bit academically. You, you mentioned a little bit academically. You had uh, 15 uh, student athletes with a 3.0 or higher, and three of those 15 are going to earn NJCAA academic honors. So really a great job uh, by the kids in the classroom, but that always comes back to the coaches uh, and, and the emphasis they put on the academics. Yeah, at Yavapai, you know, we tell recruits and we tell you know, incoming freshmen, the support systems here are tremendous, numerous. So it is a coaching staff, certainly, that maybe dangles a carrot in front of players. Right. But, you know, the expectations amongst um, administration, the guidance among support staff is you couldn't ask for anything better at this school. We could probably do a whole segment, uh, three or four segments, on what we can offer here for student yeah. athletes, for for students in general with the resources. So uh, that's a good uh, good uh, a testimonial to what we can do here at Yavapai College. All right, your boys are headed off to the summer assignments. They're going to play some uh, play some ball this summer, get better, hone their skills. Where who is headed where and who's doing what? Um, over Torres, we'll head out east um, and play in the Perfect Game Collegiate League um, under a guy named John Mayot who. Most people on the West Coast may not be real familiar just because we almost separate ourselves, right. but John is a l legendary coach out there and over needs a summer with John Mayot. He's a guy that can take him under his wing and really help some of the organization with the baseball. Trevor Edier will, will head back to California, but play in the California Collegiate League, which is a real competitive right. league. Uh, sophomores will go out. Corey Wills will go to Northwoods League. Uh, many of our sophomores will be directed by their four-year program. Where to go. So once they leave here, I almost think it's best to put it in the hands of their four-year sure. school. But but many of our players will play. Some of our pitchers won't uh, like to Rest take some arms. time off. Sure. Yeah. Uh, but this summer, as I've always said, is the year for returning sophomores. Right. It's the jump between the first and second year. And uh, for many of our freshmen, uh, it's it's maybe it's playing catch up with the bats. Or it's getting away from me right. and taking. Hey, I remember Coach said that, but yeah. uh, you know this guy says it a different way, or you know. But well, it's the same thing. They <laughs> can make it their own. Right, right. Uh, it's it's fun to watch them this summer. They really grow up. Uh, they do their own laundry. They uh, cook their own meals. They get their own directions to a ball game, stuff like that. Right. But. Um, you know, they're in good programs, they're in good hands to come back here and do good things. Absolutely. We're losing a good nucleus of players. They're, they're headed to four-year schools. Who, who's headed where? We know Avery's going to U of A. We know that. Yeah, they're all going somewhere. There's some guys still uncommitted, but they have options. Um, RJ Cordero, Jake Eater um, are the, the two guys that are uncommitted still, but they have options. And mm -hmm. Those guys academically are 3-5 and above, so right. they don't have any speed bumps. Right. Um, 
you've got Division One guys. I mean, Avery Weems go to U of A, and obviously North Carolina guys. We talked about Dallas and Dylan Dylan. Dallas. Yes, um, big time program. I'm, I'm excited for Jonathan Villa to go down to Faulkner State. It's a good program. Um, different part of the country. Sure. I'm just excited for him as a person to go down there and experience something different. Um, there's not a guy going to a bad program. Right. And I think as players go through the recruiting process of deciding a four-year school, they they want the Division One, or they now we're starting to get guys that want to get somewhere and win, right. help a team win. Sure. Well, we have that taste. <laughs> These sophomores especially have that that's, taste of winning. That's kind of where I was going. Is It's nice to see um, – Maybe there's some effect that the program has on the individual. Of, I just want to surround myself with success and successful people. Right. And, of course, that's a life lesson. Now, Caden's headed up to Lewis and Clark, uh, where his brother is. Yep. Uh, he, he concludes this year, I believe. But They're, they're excited for him. Uh, another goal being the Lewis and Clark program. But, you know, I told Caden, you're, you're not just another goal, but you're, you're Caden. Caden, right. And um, I think, you know, coming into Yavapai's program after Cooper, um, going into Lewis and Clark's program after Cooper. It's, I, I don't see it like that. I think it, he's somebody that can bring you know, another successful outlook into a successful program. So I'm happy for him. I'm happy for his family. Happy for all of our sophomores right. moving on. That's great. Let's see. It's ironic, but I'm, I'm sure uh, it, it pays. It doesn't, not sure it pays to win the conference. Uh, the number three t- seed seems oh. to move on. Arizona West are number four seed, and they, they run through uh, Coach East, and now they're hosting the, the districts, and uh, we we were the what number two three seed last year and we were, we yeah. won the national championship. Not sure it pays to win the conference. Yeah, uh, yeah. You let me know where to finish at the beginning of the year <laughs> and we'll try to finish there. I think it, maybe it's a baseball thing. You see that a lot. Um, baseball's pretty dynamic in that you whip out three game series, starting pitching, things like that. Right. I think that's what you see in the playoffs. Um, everybody in our conference has three quality arms for sure. Sure. If, of course, if not more. Um, but it's pretty interesting. Yeah. Um, I'm still a fan of winning as many games as you can. Sure. Winning breeds winning. <laughs> but I, th- I think if I had to, we joke about it amongst coaching staff in the, in the conference. Sure. Don't sure. finish first, but of course. That's Everybody not... wants to, right, <laughs> yeah. right. But, but back of your mind, you're thinking. I think it's probably something where home field advantage maybe doesn't affect you as positively as maybe you think. Because uh, everyone's played there before, it's not like we're traveling halfway across the country as we would in the major league baseball level or even NCAA level. So, you know, well, you talk about series, season. strap it on. Yeah, you talk about seasons. You, you end the regular season, then you start the second season with the playoffs. And and Katie bar the door, anything can happen in this. In the especially, I think in baseball, especially in this conference, because yeah, of the parity that we have. That's I think what it is. You know, the fourth team isn't worse than the first team. Right. They just didn't win. Three three games as much. Or well, something we like finished that. fifth, and we're what two games out of second place. Yeah. So that's how tight it was. Um, you know, I felt we finished fifth, and I felt really confident that if we made the playoffs, we'd do well. Mm-hmm. And I know that's easy to say, sure. um, but I think that's how tight it is in our conference. So, a right. uh, lot of props for coaches, a lot of props for the programs here in Arizona, and I think that's right. The reason you see threes and four seeds go on to good things nationally well and we beat ourselves up within the conference and then we go on to the next to the districts we got to go through the districts and get i mean it's a chore to get there so quite frankly what we did last year is is quite an impressive feat and what uh, what we're going to do what our conference is going to do here is is going to be yet to be seen but yeah uh, it's hard for you to root against teams that you just played but i I truly do root for an arizona team because I, i like to see uh, people you know, people you respect, come out of the conference and do something nationally and continue mm-hmm. to put our conference on a national stage. Exactly, and this is a great conference. All right, we set our sights on 2018 now. How's recruiting going for you? Uh, it's going. It's, it's never ending. Never ending, The, right? the, the dreaded uh, month of June approaches us. And sometimes it's not dreaded. Sometimes it's a gift. But uh, I can sit here and say plan A is happening, and then as soon as June approaches – Plan A goes right out the window, but the core is there, uh, the commitments are there, the team is there, and whatever happens in the month of June, we'll either do cartwheels or pick up the pieces and, and, you know, it's not going to be a situation where uh, you really have the unexpected, I don't think. Um, You can't read the future, but I think with this recruiting class, we have a good handle on prospects risks things like that right and and so the, for those that maybe don't know you mentioned the month of june the month of june because the, the mlb yeah. draft yeah uh, and you could lose recruits you could lose you could lose current players 
so it's kind of a juggling act uh, as soon as that that day comes. Yeah, we'll have we'll have probably a half a dozen guys that you know I, I hope for their sake um, do what is in the best interest of them and, and not what an ego tells them to do as sure. far as signing. Um, if a kid's gonna make life changing money in a draft, I'd be the first one to tell right. them you better go make some life changing money. But I'm just a huge proponent of of college baseball and the development it plays. And um, that's phase two in the recruiting program. Use your relationships and now show kids the value. Um, pro ball will be there. Right. Uh, Division one baseball will be there. Just continue through the process and learn how to play as an 18, 19, 20 year old instead of watch games. Exactly. Now, just a little high, high uh, sidelight here. Uh, Jojo Romero was named uh, his conference yeah. player of the year uh, week, excuse me, last week. So that's, that's quite a prideful thing sweet. there. It's pretty sweet. Um, I've talked to Jojo numerous times this month. He's a cool cat, man. I mean, he's sitting there throwing a six-inning shutout with, like, nine strikeouts and picks up the phone and talks to you about <laughs> recruiting and things like that. It's pretty sweet. Uh, Chance Adams getting called up to AAA. Right. Uh, I mean, he's going to, you know, knock on wood, stay healthy. He's got a big league arm. He's going to get a call. Uh, Willie's sitting there knocking on the door. Yeah. James Dykstra, who's in AAA, who's in our program for right. a year. I mean, it's cool stuff happening right now. So, Well, and Kenny Giles doing good things well, down yeah. at Houston. And, and uh, what do we have? Uh, Kirby Yates down at San Diego. So we've got some people uh, knocking on the door <laughs> and that are in the bigs. We did the ultimate favor last week. We called up Ken and said, hey, we've got a recruit. We're really trying to get in here uh, from the New Mexico area. And Can you make a phone Give call? Give him a call. Yeah, I'm in New York getting ready to start a game against the Yankees, but <laughs> yeah, you great. bet. It's pretty sweet stuff. That is. That's a, that's a selling point for sure. Well, we also have a new addition to the coaching staff. Tell us about him. Yeah, Tom Succo. And uh, Arizona people watching will know exactly who that is. It's another Arizona high school legend joining Yavapai staff along with Jerry. So when you think of Arizona high school baseball, you think of Horizon and Hamilton and Brophy and Chaparral. And not to leave programs out, but that's what people think of. Sure. And Tom is, he's off the charts good. Um, experienced, he's with Team USA, he's connected on the wire with recruiting. Um, he'll retire up in Prescott with his wife. And um, I think he's just ready to, to do something new. Different, right? And um, it was his time to retire from Brophy, and I think he's ready to just see what's on the next page of, of college baseball. And I think he'll love it. Yeah. Just recruiting, connections, kids. Um, we had him out at our, our prospect camp uh, the other day, and just I can't say enough good things. Really, really, really fortunate for me to have those guys on our staff along with Kyle. Great addition, great addition. So, um, good. Well, we're, we're, we're well into the season. We're on, well into the, the recruiting season. We're getting ready for next season. So, uh, uh, Coach, congratulations on a good year. Yeah. Didn't, didn't finish where we wanted, but... We did some good things this year, so great season. Congratulations. Thank you. We want to conclude this edition of the Rider Report. We wanted to thank Ryan for being with us. Be sure to follow us on www.goroughriders.com, on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram, and as always, Go Rough Riders. <laughs>